What's really exciting right now is that there are so many businesses deciding to go Mac and deciding to go headless. Businesses are deciding to move away from the monolith of the past and move towards more composable architectures. Although the principles of Mac and headless technologies are sound, and they're a massive leap forward in building modern day technology and modern day platforms, it doesn't mean that these projects can't fail. Like all technical projects, the choice of technology is often only part of an overall project success. So after being in the industry for so long and seeing so many of these projects, I thought I would basically put together my five causes of why headless and Mac architecture projects fail. So let's waste no more time. Let's get to it. Reason number five, the reason why many Mac projects run into trouble is that they do not understand that Mac architecture is a distributed computing architecture. The building blocks of Mac architecture are microservices, and they are hugely powerful when it comes to building platforms like e-commerce. But when you're building platforms like e-commerce, it could mean that you literally have hundreds of microservices from many different suppliers. This means that a full implementation of a Mac system is not a simple system. And although the implementation, the deployment, the development, the scaling, and the management of all of these services are done by the vendors, the complexity is in the joins. It's ensuring you get the glue right. It's ensuring you get data consistency across all of these services and all of these providers. It's ensuring that you have the right patterns in place for things like asynchronous calls and making sure that you have the right patterns that reduce latency across all of these API calls, across all of these microservices. Dealing with Mac architecture is more about service management than it is about real code management that you would have been used to in normal development. During my 10 years in agencies, I replaced one e-commerce platform with another e-commerce platform, like moving ATG to IBM, moving IBM to Hybris, moving Hybris to Salesforce. Often the reality of an e-commerce platform replacement project is that you would end up with less functionality than you actually started with. And this was due to the sheer amount of complexity involved in building a brand new platform with a new technology. Scope is sacrificed to reduce the complexity and gain time in the delivery of the project. This approach of complete replacement and then flicking a switch at the end was often called a big bang approach. The problem is with a monolith, it's very difficult to do an incremental approach. The most you can hope for is a phased approach, which is really a series of smaller big bangs rather than a giant big bang. And that's the value of the Mac architecture approach. You can actually choose parts of the platform to replace and do it incrementally. This ultimately reduces the complexity and reduces the risk because as your team are moving through the platform, they're constantly learning and reducing the problem's domain set. Although Mac can be implemented incrementally, it doesn't always happen. Enterprise architects still feel compelled to design an entire system and build a grand plan for the architecture that will be delivered in day one. And don't get me wrong, at a high level, yes, you can actually define those boxes fill those boxes in with all the different vendors and all the different technologies that you need. And the problem with this, as we already know, is the sheer size and the sheer complexity of replacing a platform. Even with the modularity and the services approach of Mac, using that big bang approach, you still build dependencies in, in terms of the decision-making process or even the development process. They're just dependencies that are in place when you try to do a big bang, which causes that amount of complexity. Unless you've got a huge amount of experience in Mac architecture and a huge amount of experience building Mac technology, it's gonna be a painful struggle to get it right using a big bang approach. So please, if you're listening, take an incremental approach. Even if you have a burning platform and you've got to replace everything, try to get down an incremental approach rather than go complete big bang. If you're enjoying this video and you're getting value out of this video, 
can you spend a little time and do me a favor? Can you just scroll down a little bit, press that like button so this video can be shared to many others and they can also enjoy it. I'd really appreciate it. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you. My third cause for many failures is one of organization. So let me explain. If you're embarking on a Mac project for e-commerce, it makes sense to have product teams focused on areas of the customer journey. These teams are independent and have all the skills and all the resources they need to get on with the job. And invariably, these teams will be multidisciplinary teams. The organization problem often happens when the project to replace the monolith grows or you go down a big bang approach and your architecture starts to represent the same layers in the Mac architecture that's in the monolithic architecture. Another factor to consider is that of Conway's law. Basically, if you don't consider your organizational structure, your designs will start to reflect that structure and reflect the political boundaries within your organizations, which means they won't be aligned to your customers and they may not deliver the business value you expect. Now, the classic problem I see with the platform replacement project is the platform replacement team. Usually what this means is that all your product teams, the teams that are aligned to parts of the customer journey and aligned to business value are now dependent on your platform replacement team. You've now created dependencies between all of these teams. You then end up with a waterfall project and closer to a big bang approach. And that leads nicely onto my second cause for Mac architecture failures. The second most important reason for Mac architecture project failures, in my opinion, is the waterfall project. One of the primary reasons for this, which I've already outlined, is that instead of going down an incremental approach, you end up going down a big bang or a phased approach. Another reason why waterfall appears is when you have a command and control mindset to the overall project delivery. You can see this when you have product teams, but you're trying to enforce deadlines and KPIs rather than focus on things like time to value and MVPs. Eventually what will happen in this scenario is that you'll end up with a project office with a program plan with lots of agile teams that are basically running in what we call a scrum fall All that will happen is that you'll fall into the patterns of the past of sacrificing scope to reduce complexity and compromise functionality for timing. And the ethos of continuously releasing small iterations and continually adding value to the project and to the platform is mired in the complexity of project management and project management workshops that are inevitably inaccurate. And I've seen this so many times. The business ends up with no agility and the project development teams end up in a death march. And here is my number one frustration, my number one reason why I believe that Mac architecture projects fail. And that is focusing on the technology and not on the business. There are reasons for the decision to go to Mac. And those reasons should be business reasons, such as a far better customer experience, delivering a consistent omni-channel experience to every customer touch point, and the business to be ready for the future, be faster, more agile, and be ready to deal with change. The reasons shouldn't be technical reasons. The reason shouldn't be because you want to modernize the technology or you like the sound of Mac architecture or you think the technology looks really cool. Going towards Mac for technology's sake is doomed to failure. The problem is that most projects start out with good intentions. They start out with a clear business objective. But as we've seen in the other four points, if the approach is wrong, things can go awry. And the focus of the project ends up being about replacing a platform, not about the original business objective of adding business value. The key is to always make sure that you focus on the business goals because Mac technology is just the enabler for those goals. I hope you find this useful and I hope these points that I've brought forward help you in defining your next Mac project 
Now, I really understand that there are cases where that you may be on a burning platform, that you may need to replace the entire thing, and the incremental approach and all the things I'm talking about might seem extremely difficult to do. And you might think, yeah, that's great, John. In a real world, that's what I do, but I can't do it now. But believe me, even in product development and the things that we do, it always seems like you can only do a big bang. And our job as architects and business people is to abstract and look at the overall project, look at the architecture, take out those dependencies and try and build a program in which we can do it incrementally and we can start small and move fast. And if you do want any more information on the architectural principles of Mac architecture and the technology surrounding the Mac architecture, I'll take a look at this next video because it'll be quite useful. Or even this video here that uh, YouTube is suggesting. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.